In Ferncliff, Nurse Mandy checks on Sasha, who is confused and scared. Sasha feels she's missing something important as if she lost a chunk of time. Mandy gets her water and breakfast. Sasha would like to talk to Gladys, so the nurse says she'll try and get in touch with her. Mandy returns and says she left a message with Gladys. Dr. Montague appears as Sasha asks Mandy to call Kobe Bell. Dr. Montague enters and asks Mandy not to make any calls for Sasha without telling him. They uncuff Sasha from her bed so she's more comfortable, and Dr. Montague dismisses the nurse. Alone, Dr. Montague asks why she wants to speak to Cody. She says he's her friend and has helped her before. He says that would be awkward given she tried to kill him. She says she doesn't remember stabbing Cody, but he says she did in front of a lot of people. He says that is why she's here, to get help. He suggests they start with what she does remember. She says everything was going well. Some days were better than others, but she was handling things. She believes her problems started with the pills he gave her. She started to feel groggy, paranoid, and began to hallucinate. Dr. Montague says the pills didn't cause that, and claims they found drugs in her purse, which he shows her. He says they are what caused her to try and kill Cody. She says she hasn't been taking those, but he says her blood work says otherwise. She insists she hasn't been taking them, but he says these are the facts. He says they need to get the drugs out of her system and injects her with a drug that he says will do the trick. At the Metro Court Pool, Scout finishes her swim lessons and tells her mom that she misses daddy. Sam misses him too. Gladys appears and says this breaks her heart and wonders how Scout's dealing with her daddy being in the slammer. Gladys ignores a call from Ferncliff and Sam sends Scout off to get a snack. Sam lashes out at Gladys for saying what she did to Scout and threatens to throw her in the pool if she talks to her daughter like that again. Gladys apologizes and says being here just reminds her of Sasha stabbing Cody. Sam brings up how much better Sasha was and wonders who pushed her to snap. Gladys can't believe she's accusing her. Sam says she's not accusing her, but it's clear Sasha was doing great until that day. Sam wonders why Gladys is so paranoid and thinks that she really did some digging she'd find out something about her. Gladys rants she and her friends thought Sasha was fine, but only she saw the truth that Sasha was in trouble. Sam doesn't believe that, but Gladys says she doesn't know Sasha like she does, and says Sam never will. Gladys storms off. Sam calls Ferncliff to try and arrange to visit Sasha. But a nurse tells her only people approved by Gladys can visit her. Scout checks in with her mom, who looks upset. She asks if she's in trouble. Sam says she did nothing wrong, someone else did. At the Metro Court, Sunny is with Nana as she calls about wedding venues. Brick shows up, and Sunny goes to the alcove with him to see what he has for him. Brick presents a slew of photos and information. First up is Betty, who has no criminal record, and did work as a nanny, but also as a receptionist at a trucking company in Pochevac. Brick also gives him what he knows about Austin, and then comes to Gordon. Gordon also worked at the same trucking company in Pochevac. He gets to Mason, who also was a trucker with the family company. He says the company was bought two years ago through unusual circumstances, and there are no records of the deal or Mason's job since then. Sonny says his job is blackmail. Sonny tells Brick that Mason is currently blackmailing Ava. He fills Brick in that Ava accidentally killed Nicholas and that Mason has the body. He has to protect Ava, so they can't do anything to Mason until they get the body back. Meanwhile, at the bar, Nina tells Olivia that planning this wedding is going to drive her crazy. Olivia events, really Nina. Nina apologizes and knows she's going through a lot with Ned. Nina says Ned loves her. But Olivia reminds her that Sonny loved Carly, and now he's marrying her. Nana didn't realize she was still so upset about that. But Olivia says what's going on with Ned and his amnesia just reminds her of Sonny thinking he was Mike. Nana points out that her situation with Ned is different. But Olivia says Ned still thinks he's Eddie. She cries he was out again all night. And for all she knows he's falling in love with another woman like Sunny fell in love with her. 
Nina suggests Olivia go home as she can take care of things here. Olivia refuses as she wants to get her mind off all things Eddie and Quartermain. She has the perfect thing to do that, and announces that she's going to plan Nina's wedding. Nina asks if that won't be painful for her. Olivia loves Sonny and wants him to be happy, and Nana makes him happy. Nina asks what about Carly? Olivia says she's her best friend.